What up? Hey guys. So welcome to our talk. My name is Douglas Borge. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Tesla Science Center. Thank you for your patience here today and thank you for coming out and hanging out with us. So uh, we are, let me just put this, uh, let's see. Sorry, what's really interesting is um, this is, I'm working off a $60 laptop right now from Micro Center, from Jeff that he bought yesterday. And my laptop, which I spent $1,800, was just not having any of this business. Uh, Jeff, where is on the slide? Do you see the, uh, I can't do F5, I'm on a web version. There we go. All right, we're in business. So welcome and thank you for your patience, everyone. We'll try to move this along a little bit faster just so uh, we really get to the Q&A session because that's really what um, we like to do and enjoy and have this conversation about. But in short, we're Tesla Science Center. Many of you have been coming here on a consistent kind of years and checking us out and our progress of what we've been doing. But back in 2012, we had run the world's largest crowd fundraiser. What you don't know is that we've actually been at this since 1996. Since 1996, we've been trying to save Nikola Tesla's laboratory, and it wasn't until 2012 when we partnered with the Oatmeal that we were able to fundraise $1.45 million, and that really allowed us to purchase the property in combination with some state funding. So right after we purchased the property, you know, we went to the negotiation table, made a lot of concessions, and understanding that the intrinsic value for us was so much greater than the monetary value, right? It wasn't anything about that. So we did a lot of concessions and we had a lot of learning lessons to do over the couple years, months, weeks, everything. So in short, we purchased the property and we went into development mode and we've been able to fundraise now $11 million out of the $20 million project. It's still a long, long road ahead of us and this has not been an easy feat for us at all, but we've made some pretty astronomical progress over the last two years. COVID has been not advantageous for anyone for obvious reasons, but it really gave us some time to regroup and rethink and put a year down to the ground and adapt to some things and situations to uh, the way that I think a lot of us were already thinking inside of this room, but the general public wasn't, right? So how do we incorporate the virtual zone and how do we incorporate aspects that expand our community far beyond the geographical territory of what it is? And the reality is that we, are, we have a physical location, but Tesla Science Center is global. Nikola Tesla is a global citizen. And it's really consolidating that community into some capacity that is, not everyone can come out to Wardenclyffe, whether that's physical because of your limitations, financial, or whatever it is. So anyways, um, just so you understand our, our mission, it's up on the screen, I'm not gonna reread that to you, but I'm gonna give it to you really simple. Our goal is to really make more Nikola Teslas, right? And I don't mean that in terms of, we're not gonna make a single person. Every single one of you have an, at, uh, an aspect of Nikola Tesla. And so we do a lot of educational programming to train and get people to break the mold of who they are, right? So society generally kind of puts us in a little box. We try to break that box, that box, turn it upside down, step outside of it, you know. The, the general understanding is to give them the tools that they need to be successful, but take it beyond and question. Because when we're two years old, we always ask, why? <laughs> then we get to three, we still ask them why. We still start getting older and older. And lots of us really just start asking and begging that question, why? And why is a really important question as to who Nikola Tesla is. You know, you question society, what you should do. The AC distribution motor that was created by Nikola Tesla was commonly questioned by individuals and saying, the science isn't there. Why are you doing that, Nikola Tesla, today? The power that we have inside of this room, and even though that motor, AC distribution motor is over 100 years old, we're still using it today. And this is technology that, sure, has some improvements, right? But nonetheless, it's all about the science. And it was Nikola Tesla asking and begging that question. I was like, well, I don't understand why we're doing this. So. Please, question everything. So this is just one of my favorite quotes about Nikola Tesla. I think it just tells his relationship in, to, in taking a page from nature, but still working with every single one of us in this room. Nikola Tesla is an individual that was always working with nature, not against it. You know, it's been around for, depending on what the species is or item is or whatever it is, but millions, billions, or even longer of years. So there's no need to uh, work against it. It's really just take a page, let's learn from it. So let's talk about Nikola Tesla and really being the futurist. So 
Nikola Tesla is just an astronomical individual, but really, you got to understand the dynamic of when he was, right? So Nikola Tesla died in 1946. But prior to that, most people were, and depending on the time frame, he's just, you know, he lived a, a pretty decent life in terms of um, lifespan. But Nikola Tesla was surrounded by individuals where a light bulb was kind of at the forefront of technology. He identified as an electrician, right? And we don't think, we think of electricians today as someone you may call, you know, Jeff, you, something happens in your house, right? You're like, oh no, the electrical power, maybe not Jeff, because Jeff takes care of all of his own stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, someone like me, I'm not, I'm not great with that stuff, you know, this is not, so I'm like, oh, you know, I'm gonna touch the wrong wire, I'm gonna get electrocuted, something's gonna happen. I'm not into it, right? So you'd call an electrician, they fix your house, this is when Nikola Tesla was identifying as an electrician. It was emerging science. It's a different dynamic of what it is. This is someone that, at the time, if you had a light bulb, you were considered an affluent individual or have a luxury inside of your house. Radio, radio communications and radio distribution was kind of at the forefront of what was happening. I'm not talking about radio today is freaking awesome. And what they're doing with the technology is beyond. However, the most simplest form of radio of communications was being utilized back then, and that was a luxury. So this is an individual where uh, horse and buggy were very common, but yet was able to think so far beyond and set the tone for in things that we are dealing with today, right? This is an individual that would go on to predict AI, right? And vehicles that can drive themselves. Anyone ever heard of a vehicle that can drive itself? Yeah. Be, go on to just have really interesting predictions, and we'll get into those in a little bit. But um, right here, I've got a couple kind of dynamics of, of different inventions that Nikola Tesla had um, been involved in. And it doesn't mean that he invented all of these. It means he had a hand in a lot of these things. So I'm not going to read those. I'm going to sh share these slides with everyone so you have these. But I want to introduce first who is up on this um, on this panel here. So a couple things. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. Bryan uh, had pulled out on this. He uh, accepted a job with the Department of Defense and is going to be working on some really astronomical physics. And he had to pull out. So he was our historian and physicist that was going to be on this panel. And unfortunately, Mark Alessi had a, had a personal issue that he had to manage, but was able to put together a video message. But um, why don't we have everyone just self-introduce on the screen? Let's go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm um, Jeffrey Belez. Um, terrified right now of being here. I was not supposed to do the presentation. I was supposed to be downstairs doing the table, talking to you wonderful people about Nikola Tesla. Um, but I figured, my goodness gracious, I got to help him out, got to get in, and it's, uh, it's hope. And so, you know, hack the planet, man. I've been wanting to uh, <laughs> get in front of you folks for a while as a speaker. And um, so it's, it may go a little bit off the rails, so I apologize about that. <laughs> you know, the presentation was supposed to be, you know, we're still trying to stick to it. Uh, Tesla's predictions for the future. Um, I'm already getting ahead of myself. Uh, but been with the organization for nearly about a decade or so. Just been trying to do everything I can for Tesla. And um, we'll share a little story for you. Uh, Mid-90s, since the computer scene, the hacking scene, bulletin boards, and then came upon 2600. And then my buddy's getting into 2600, and then we find out about these meets that they have in the city. So mid-90s, we're going into the meets, and just what a different time it was, you know, just meeting these individuals who had, you only knew them by their handle, you know, you didn't know anybody by their name, and it was very kind of, just something very special about it. So in these meets, we'd be going through the city, and this does tie in, I'm not just rambling too, it. too much here. Um, we'd pass by different landmarks in the city, and one of the ones that I remember the most was the New Yorker Hotel. And then, so here we are, all these hackers just going through the city, and I see this plaque, like, yo, Nikola Tesla, he lived here. Interesting, that name's popped up before. We have another meet, we're going to Bryant Park, and boom, something else about Tesla. And then other areas in the city just keep bumping into Tesla. And then just as everything progressed with um, what I was doing, my, in, you know, things that I was interested in, learning more about Tesla, uh, living on Long Island, and then just finding out, reading about, you know, his Wardenclyffe lab in Shoreham, New York, which is, holy cow, it's a town over from me. So what I'm really trying to get to is just the weird connections. It's like now, from mid-90s to now, 20, 30 plus years later, and here we are now, I'm 
with the Tesla Science Center, presenting at Hope, you know, with 2600 just being really kind of integral part of my journey into to finding Tesla. So Tesla is just amazing to me being, you know, an enigmatic figure from the past that is still just so relevant today, if not more so today, because we need someone with a visionary like Tesla and the ideas that he had that we're gonna expand upon a little bit. Um, so just super excited to be here. <laughs> Glad I got that out. So we're gonna introduce my, my good buddy, Ed Wilson. Hey, I'm Ed Wilson, uh, amateur radio operator, N2XDD, uh, longtime reader of 2600, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, <clears throat> I'm fairly new to the Tesla Science Center, so I'm part of the B team. I was the backup <laughs> speaker, so don't expect a whole lot out of me. <laughs> I'm pretty new with the uh, Tesla Science Center as a volunteer. Um, they reached out to me with my, I don't want to say expertise in radio, but my many years of experience in amateur radio. So just recently we had started the Tesla Science Center Amateur Radio Club, and uh, there's four members of the club right now, and three are on the stage, and one's <laughs> in the third row. So um, we're a new club that's going to start out. We're not going to be your grandfather's amateur radio club. We're going to be a local as well as global amateur radio club uh, touching on diversity and inclusion and all sorts of really cool kick-ass things. Uh, I'm also part of the M17 project. For those who were in the room for the talk before, Steve K2GOG in the, in the uh, front room was talking about. So uh, I've been around radio a very long time and I hope to help out and build a kick-ass club for the Tesla Science Center that's gonna reach a global audience. Take it. Yeah, absolutely. I want to expand upon that too. So we're just getting started. So we're also soliciting feedback. So if anyone wants to reach out to us, club ideas or other ideas, we've got our visitor center opening relatively soonish, as soon as we get the thumbs up from the DEC. But once we open that up, it, it really is a pivotal point for us for educational programming. And this is a, a hub for us to start expanding upon this. So again, come on over and um, talk to us at our booth. We're gonna be here all weekend. Thank you, thank you, Ed, and thank, thank you, you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. So, I'm gonna make sure, uh, <laughs> this is the video we're having issues with, so let me make sure that this works and the audio is good to go. Just understanding that Nikola Tesla is pretty much the ultimate white hat hacker, and it really is the representational story of who he is, right? It's, it's about doing something for the betterment of humanity, fixing the problems that we have here, the problems of, that he was working on then, continue to be persistent problems of today and tomorrow. So let's see if uh, we got this video working. Should be some audio on this one. I can restart it. Oh, wait, the, the thing isn't connected. Oh, no, it is, it is. Nice. So the Tesla Science Center, we're looking for audiovisual people to help us out <laughs> with future talks. See me afterwards, thank you. Jeez, it's just trying to kick over the HDMI. Oh, it's there, it's just really low. All right, if we can crank it up a little bit, that would be awesome. Ready? It was a spirit of rogue, experimental rebellion, disruptive of established existing systems with the goal of replacing them with something better. He locked out conventional thinking and he was a provocative force to presumption. When people think of hacking, there's a sort of nervous admiration for the genius with that special kind of talent. And Nikola Tesla certainly incited feelings of nervous admiration from those around him, particularly his peers. He was a kind of alternative scientific artist, like a physics punk rocker. He had a different point of view. To start, Tesla saw himself not as an inventor, but as a discoverer, 
one that reveals solutions already in the framework of existence, to harness the real work of nature, uncovering natural secrets rather than construction built on its limitations. Such an improvisational spirit of exploration led to the concepts of radar, radio, x-rays, robotics, remote control, and even early computer tech. In fact, his teleautomaton patent, in which a prototype was demonstrated at Madison Square Garden in 1898, utilized patents for radio, wireless remote control, and a type of early logic circuit known as the Nano A and D gate, which is sort of the key to binary code. Outside the garden, it was horse and buggy technology. Inside, there was a remote controlled boat under intelligent control. Onlookers thought it was a trick that Tesla had a trained monkey inside it. That's how unimaginable the concept was. But of all his innovations, it was his induction motor, an engine that could efficiently run on alternate current electricity that revolutionized the status quo, propelling the world into an age of progress. Without it, most likely electric power would have been a rare luxury, only accessible to the wealthy. This motor, born of Tesla's fertile and untarnished imagination, was previously considered an impossibility by the scientific community, one not achievable through the laws of physics. Tesla hacked through perceived limitations of science and nature to move the world forward. He was a rogue scientist whose unconventional application of physical principles created a sense of unease in the world around him. He was a genius with an amazing talent that you'd hope would be used for benevolence and not maliciousness. One whose brilliance could reward the world with free wireless energy or punish it with a death ray or earthquake machine. Fortunately for the world, Tesla wore a white hat. And in a way, one can describe his mission at Wardenclyffe as the ultimate hack, a way to disrupt the entire global system of energy and information to help the world evolve, to point out the flaws of an antiquated system and spark a movement of positive change, to battle the titans of power and usurp their control to place it in the hands of the people. At Wardenclyffe, he had promised J.P. Morgan a radio tower, but his covert plans were much more ambitious free wireless power to any place on the globe. With a 187-foot high tower, he would set energy not through the air as his contemporaries were attempting, but through the earth itself. Such a radical endeavor was far more expensive than Morgan's radio tower. According to legend, after Tesla revealed the true potential of the Wardenclyffe power station, J.P. Morgan questioned how one would be able to meter free electricity just prior to defunding the project. Sadly, this would ultimately lead to the end of Tesla's dream at Wardenclyffe. Whether or not he could have achieved the practical transmission of wireless power is an open debate. One I would personally urge caution with after studying his life for so long. For how many times did Tesla achieve his goal despite the prevailing scientific consensus? For many, Tesla remains a true inspiration, an intellectual rebel, a scientific agitator, a fighter who violated the most respected preconceived notions of what was deemed possible, a slap in the face to a narrow-minded scientific consensus. Tesla's spontaneous spirit of discovery, in my view, made him the coolest radical thinker on the planet, launching an insurrection movement against the accepted scientific norms. He was a visionary so far ahead of his time, a genius loner, in a white hat. Thank you, and, and thank you to Joe Sikorsky who put together that video here for everyone at the HOPE conference. Um, Joe Sikorsky sits on our History and Collections Committee and is one of the historians that helps guide and check the authenticity of the history that we articulate. We are um, very poignant and strict on what we try to talk about in relationship to the history of Nikola Tesla as it's uh, not necessarily a linear path and it's mucked by um, uh, a lot of propaganda that's circulated around it, whether it's related to uh, Edison, uh, ACDC, current wars, right? Or uh, other kind of government conspiracy theories or different things. There's a lot we don't know about Nikola Tesla. And even though our history and co uh, collections committee members are considered the experts around the globe, we continue to learn as individuals and continue to gather information. So, um, you know, by all means, always approach us. You got an idea, got a thought, you know, got some documentation, send it our way. We're still people and um, we make mistakes as well. So we, we try to be correct the record as much as we can. All right. So thank you, Joe.
So next thing I want to tell you, uh, unfortunately, Mark Alessi couldn't be here. He's our executive director. He's normally here on um, an annual basis. Uh, our panel just kind of fell apart, just circumstances that they had going on, I think, post-COVID. Um, and I don't even think we're post-COVID, but nonetheless, whatever, um, there is some COVID situation and ultimately some personal decisions that needed to be made for some members of our panelists. And I, I really want to thank Jeff and Ed for coming here today and putting this together to make sure that we can give you the best presentation possible. Um, but we do have a message from our executive director just opining upon what we have done over the last year. Uh, in relationship to some of the educational program and progress that we have made. I want to preface this with um, understanding we're not done. Although it's been a long road to get to where we are today, it's still a long road to finish. Uh, at the end of the day, we've been able to hit the $11 million mark on a $20 million capital campaign project. And in short, this past year, we had been able to uh, basically when COVID hit, reposition the organization in relationship to some analytical data uh, and progress reports to document it, to do what we're doing this year. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say we've applied for about $15 million worth of grants this year. And uh, we hope to get a couple of those grants and start working on the philanthropic giving and get uh, the Musk Foundation and other organizations back involved in the next step of philanthropic giving so we can bring this vision together and uh, have the Hope Conference maybe at Tesla Science Center next time, right? <laughs> I'm thoroughly impressed at the $60 laptop. Hello, my name is Mark Alessi and I'm Executive Director at the Tesla Science Center at Wardenclyffe, site of the great inventor Nikola Tesla's only remaining laboratory. Tesla once said, the future for which I have really worked is mine. I'm honored to have this chance to tell you how we're working to ensure the future for Nikola Tesla. At the Tesla Science Center, our vision is a world where people appreciate Tesla's contributions, are inspired by his scientific audacity, and engage in the future betterment of humanity. By following this vision and our mission, Tesla Science Center made important progress in 2021. I want to share those details with you now, along with our plans for 2022 and beyond. 2021 was a challenging year globally for everybody, including not-for-profits and the Tesla Science Center is no different. In fact, as we were getting ready to launch the Tesla Science Center, a lot of our potential construction was put on hold as permits were delayed. But we took the past year to look inward and go through a strategic planning process. It was important for us to stress test the vision we've always had for the Tesla Science Center so we hired Museum Management Consultants, MMC, one of the premier strategic planning firms for museums and science centers nationally. They brought in AECOM, an international engineering firm that actually has a department that concentrates on forecasts for visitorship and financial operations for museums and science centers prior to opening. We're excited and motivated by the positive results which will help ensure that once we open the doors to test the Science Center next year, our programming and operations will be sustainable. Furthermore, in 2021, we were able to move toward hybrid and in-person programming again. The gates of Wardenclyffe were open to visitors from around the world for historic tours and unique investigative tours. We hosted our annual Tesla Birthday Expo to honor the inventor's life and work with an outdoor event that featured robotics demonstrations, steam exhibits, makerspace lab, Tesla's inventions, and our new 3D scan of the interior of the Tesla lab. Architect helped electrify the event with a show that featured Tesla coils, electric guitars, and plenty of lightning. 
Nordenclyffe became an open-air theater for Sounds of Science, an immersive musical evening that celebrated the wonders of Tesla's universe and connections between science and music. We collaborated with another not-for-profit, Rites of Spring Music, to present a truly unique show that fused music, technology, and Tesla. One of the highlights of 2021 was the Medal for Tesla program that combines environmentalism, education, and fundraising. It was conceived by founding board member Jean Genova, who has been recycling the medal at Wardenclyffe since 2013 with a group of dedicated volunteers. Medal for Tesla raised 14 tons in 2021 for a whopping total of over 71 tons of metal collected since 2013 to help preserve Wardenclyffe and the planet. We're now ready to energize 2022 with more bold, transformative education and enrichment programs. As host of our Tesla Unwired webcast, I invite you to join us for new episodes in 2022 that feature real-time conversations with global innovators. And learners of all ages will benefit from expanded tours and events, both in-person and virtual. These new programs include youth coding classes and cutting-edge STEAM programs in collaboration with Morrison Mentors. We're also excited to break ground on our new visitor site and continue renovations on Tesla's lab. Thank you for exploring the progress and future at Tesla Science Center. We welcome your involvement and invite you to learn more at teslasciencecenter.org. So unfortunately, Mark Alessi couldn't uh, join us. He had a family thing that he had to take care of, but um, uh, he wanted to make sure that uh, everyone knew uh, he's been consistently coming here every year, and I get lost in the sauce just like Jeff does. So my job day in, day out is the kind of analytics of the organization and leveraging those for what is our end goal. Uh, so Mark Alessi really gets into what would be the high-level information. Uh, I get myself lost in what is the, the details of what we're trying to accomplish in relationship to scaling the organization, um, which I generally tend to lose audiences with, so I won't get into it. But really what we want to start, talk oh, uh, start talking about is kind of some of Nikola Tesla's uh, inventions, right? So let me just turn this up. So Nikola Tesla, beyond the fact that he was an individual uh, that was really thinking about the future in such a way that to, the, to this day, some of his predictions haven't come true, right? Or some of those predictions are still stagnant, or maybe some of those predictions are a little bit too far-fetched, but um, they're far-fetched for us now. And these were far-fetched ideas from back then, right? So Nikola Tesla being one of the individuals that had the prediction in terms of, of um, uh, the Wi-Fi, I'm gonna get into a couple of these things, artificial intelligence, wireless power transmission, and also smartphones. So I'll work my way backwards here, and then I'm gonna really call upon the panel just to expand upon a couple things and just have a conversation, and we're gonna open up for q and I'm trying to save us some time. Uh, we're gonna skip probably some of these, but join us at our booth. We're here, like I said, all weekend. We're gonna be here for as long as we want. Ask us questions. We don't have all the answers, but we will give you our business card, and we will take your information, and we will circle back. So. Um, just going into uh, smartphones, really. It's one of those devices that I think every single one of us can't live without these days. And um, even if you're, I just, I don't know anyone that doesn't have a smartphone at this particular point, right? And it's really a vital part where Nikola Tesla had predicted in 1903 the prediction of the cell phone right at Wardenclyffe, a device that would be inside of your pocket that you'd be able to take out and communicate with people all over the globe. He'd take it actually a little bit further in a 1926, I believe, article, where he'd start talking about the intercommunication of the devices that could be leveraged for live presentations and really having what would be uh, an immersive experience, right? So uh, for that would be something like FaceTime or something that's happening in person at that moment. So I think we're gonna skip a couple of these and we're just gonna call upon, I think, the panel and just put up my favorite quote here. So before, just this is 
very representational of who Nikola Tesla was. Let the, fu let the future tell the truth and evaluate each according to his work and accomplishments. The present is theirs. The future, for which I have really worked for, is mine. And I think that tells the story of who is Nikola Tesla, always talking about tomorrow. And at Tesla Science Center, we're no different. We're trying to focus in on what are the far-fetched ideas that sometimes are kind of intertwined with some like DARPA kind of stuff and conversations, but that's what we need to go for. We need to start talking about our birthday party will have bring the world's largest portable Tesla coil. It is a 40-foot Tesla coil. It is unreal. <laughs> but then you start thinking about, so what? You got a Tesla coil, what does it mean? Well, that Tesla coil is being utilized by Google X Labs to study lightning with an end goal of being able to harness the power of, of lightning. And it's a renewable energy resource that is not limited to just this planet of Earth, but planets all over the universe. So the idea of being able to travel and go to super Earths or different Earths that are all over and utilizing as a renewable energy resource is beyond and something that may not happen during our lifetime. However, those are the conversations that we want to continue to have, and those are the individuals we want to collaborate with. We're really a centralized hub for communication for individuals with far-fetched ideas. So if you got one, come join us. So um, Ed, do you want to go first and give us a little bit of kind of dynamic of sure. radio and <laughs> all things? So uh, in Nik Nikola Tesla's work with wireless transmissions has definitely led to radio as we know it today. Um, most people of the younger generation do not realize that the device that's in everybody's pocket is actually a radio. It's not a cell phone as old timers like me. It's not a phone like old people like me know a phone to be. So um, his work with radio and uh, communications is with us today and, and everything around us as far as, you know, radios are used everywhere, emergency communications and amateur radio geeks like myself and just broadcast uh, AM and FM radio stations that are still out there. I know uh, a lot of you younger people don't listen to it. Everything's streaming now, but Nikola Tesla was, as far as I'm concerned, the father of radio. And uh, most people contribute that to Marconi, but I believe the Supreme Court in 1946, I right want to say? Right after, his, right death. after his death. Yeah, yeah they... Yeah, they uh, they deemed that Marconi's patents were invalid and uh, most of Marconi's works were based on everything that Tesla was working on, uh, a lot of it at Wardenclyffe. Uh, Wardenclyffe is actually about 60 miles east of here, so it is relatively close. If anybody does live in New York, <clears throat> like Doug had said earlier, uh, we are having a birthday celebration in uh, September, so please come out and have a tour of the campus and, and celebrate uh, our belated uh, Tesla birthday party. You know, Ed, what I find interesting about radio is that it's power and communications, right? And I think most of us think of radio as let's jam out in the car, but really radio is two-pronged. And I think, um, do you want to tell the audience a little bit about the Tel Automaton um, that had happened over here in Shoreham? Sure, so the Tel Automaton, Tele Autonomaton <laughs> was uh, Tesla's 31 foot remote control boat um, that was in 1898 or so. Oh, I, I don't recall it? the exact yeah. year, but yeah. that sounds right about yeah. right. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> he showed off this 31 foot remote control boat, which was unheard of at the time. Um, and people were just amazed by the fact that he was sending commands to it wirelessly. Um, People were questioning whether he had a trained monkey inside of it at one time to do all of these controls. But uh, that, that awesome patent that, that he had put forward is probably uh, the first drone. Essentially, right? Uh, yeah, of its type. So yeah, pretty yeah. interesting, which led to him being nicknamed the, uh, the wizard yeah. because of the, uh, the magic that he had within. Is unreal, you know. It's this is a time where everyone's in horse and buggy for the most part, right? So he had shown this off, and people were like, "No, I can't believe that's true." There's a trained monkey inside of there, but even more so, the science that's inside of it's the first use of binary, uh, binary code. Now, he didn't utilize it in software base. This was this was a hardware, and it just basically told the device whether it can go left or right. He'd go on to pitch this to the U.S. Army and say, "Hey." 
do you guys want to buy this? You could use it for defense. Maybe you tie it to your missiles. You know, what do you think? And the U.S. Army says, no thanks, not interested. Can you imagine any military around the world without radio-controlled devices, drones, or anything else? It just, uh, it'd be insane. But th th this, is, this is what he was doing on, he was working on things that were very progressive and so big that sometimes even individuals that were these large corporations that were uh, investing heavily, in this case, war, didn't even see the vision. They didn't see a practical purpose for it. And they were, they were that narrow-minded in terms of what it was. But maybe it's for the better for that one. I think it just it ties into the quote perfectly. If you really think of Tesla as the person, nearly everything he was doing was for the betterment of mankind. It wasn't about the monetary aspect for it. you know. And so when, when we started this, they were thinking of you know Tesla's predictions of the futures. And, Awesome folks over there. I know they've heard me talk about it a bunch of times. There are the folks who've seen me at the tables just talk about Tesla's vision of the future and how he was able to map it out with the technology that he helped build and he saw how it would unfold. Now, they just weren't ready for it at the time. You know, the people just couldn't understand it, couldn't grasp it. You know, one of the, the thoughts I have that really imagine being this man with these ideas and really knowing in your heart how it's going to unfold, but. Um, just the world wasn't ready for it yet. He was a man out of time. You know, people weren't grasping it. I mean, look at today. Tesla was on Long Island in 1901. It's 2022. We're still trying to unravel what he did then. But even more so, it's been so much time since he's, he's passed. He's still such an enigmatic figure to us, and we're drawn to him. I'm drawn to him. I mean, look at all the, the folks that are here just hearing us talk. It's just so amazing just how important he is. You know, and it just rings true because he, he wanted to propel us forward. And that's what I think so many of us resonate with in, inside, especially the hacker spirit. You know, we want to tinker, you know, to understand it, to break it down, and also to make it better, to, to try and do something with our lives. And, you know, so, but it was kind of funny in, in doing that. I'm so used to talking about all the cool stuff that Tesla was right. Man, Tesla was on the money. But it was interesting because he was, he was off the mark sometimes also. And you figure, but it was also product of the time in some cases. You know, the biggest one that usually comes up is the eugenics aspect. He was on board with it. You know, that was kind of a, a recurring thread of the time that he thought, you know, uh, forced sterilization and, um, you know, weeding out of the undesirables. You know, today, just unfortunately, it, it's that feels like that thought process is coming back, you know, and coming, you know. Um, so I don't know, so I'm going off the rails a little bit, but just hope, you know, I know it's hackers on planet Earth, but it's, it's hope for, for the future. And like, we don't even have any buildings open yet. And just look at the, the excitement and just the passion that's still, you know, out for Nikola Tesla and for, more importantly, for his work and, and just trying to do right in the world. Um, it's sad because some of his other, you know, ideas, predictions that he had that did not come true were, um, his thoughts that, or what he thought he could do with his technology, how his technology would better mankind. Like one of the, the quotes that I came across really kind of broke my heart a little bit, you know, and uh, he's got, long before the next century dawns, systematic reforestation and the scientific management of natural resources will have made an end of all devastating droughts, forest fires, and floods. The universal utilization of water power and its long distance transmission uh, we'll supply every household with cheap power. What's going on in the world right now? Where it's it's completely off the rails, you know, in terms of of those aspects. And it's sad that you know he was really hoping his technology would help usher in you know a, a better future for 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 all. And so just kind of hoping that that's what we can try and keep that passion alive. And um, even though he was wrong in some aspects, he just gotta keep rolling with it, you know. Um, Jeff, Jeff and I were talking about this earlier, right? And I, I think it's interesting that Jeff is saying, well, we've got a couple predictions of Nikola Tesla that were not on the money yeah. or not wrong. But like, there's some that are just kind of also debatable. It's like, are they wrong or has it not happened yet? Yeah. Right? So like, this is a far-fetched idea. He, he said at one point that he was uh, trying to harness the power of the cosmos. Personally, I have no idea what that means. Like, what are the cosmos? What is the power of the cosmos? 
But it is interesting to think, and then we do have conversations that revolve around whether it's the James Webb Telescope or we've got our friends over at CERN that just recently discovered three new particles, right? We, we, we're still in, we don't know it all. And untheorized physics, right, and the unknown aspect of it is still an evolving conversation and is still uh, a learning process. So what that means, beyond me personally. And I, I think in that case, you see like the, the, the kind of optimism that he has with science inside of it. But the reality is that Nikola Tesla's gone and it's up to each one of us inside of this room to continue that legacy inside of it. So people who want to prevent deforestation in relationship to science, you know, I'm, I'm sure many of you guys go on Reddit and most recently watching that worm that can eat plastic. That's what I'm talking about. You know, there's, those are the types of technology that we need to do in order to preserve uh, Nikola Tesla's legacy. Some of his predictions, you know, he would go on and say at Wardenclyffe, I like the power of the sun only if we can harness it. He wasn't kicking rocks when MIT discovered how to ultimately uh, harness the power of the sun with the FOSA um, PV cell. I think it was in the 80s. But he had other things in terms of like, he wanted to really kind of connect the world in relationship. He said, we, we, if we're able to connect the world in relationship to communication devices, we'd have a huge operational brain. You know, it's the internet now. And so there are just a plethora of different in inventions that he has. But do you want to go into some of the other ones? And it's, touching on that super, super quick, because I think we're running out of little time here. So I don't know if we want to either grab a couple questions or, you could, like I said, we're, we're going to be at the tables you know, for the rest of the weekend. One that came up, and I don't have the direct quote for me, but the gist of it was, was he felt with his you know, world brain system, you know, whereas information will flow as it does almost now, instantly. He felt that it would actually turn society into a more of a utopian society because now all nations, all people can share with each other and the information's free. What are we seeing now? <laughs> you know, we can communicate instantly with each other, but it's who's controlling that information that's out there to the masses that are just driving people in all these crazy different directions. So it's, it's sad you know, that he thought that it would be, you know, the, or, or just like the, the death ray, you know, he thought it would be the end to wars if everybody had the ability to just annihilate each other also. Um, you know, or just like I was saying before with the deforestation and the droughts and the fires, it's just, it's, um, it's just really, just wild. Just yeah, so wild. We'll, please join us at our booth. Uh, can we take questions? Is that re okay and go until we go or you tell us? Just kick us off stage when you guys think we can awesome. go. You guys can hear me. Um, so if there was one thing that I came for hope, it was for this actually. You guys, uh, this resonated with me. Um, so uh, my, my handle is Seraph, Seraf, depends on how you want to pronounce it. I am, my name, my real name is Leo. But um, uh, the question will come later really on how I can help. But uh, we're all here for a reason. I work in cybersecurity, my job is secure not today's world, it's the future for my daughter, for our kids. Everything we do today impacts 100 years from now. Um, and you pretty much hit the nail on the head where we have the ability to discover future pioneers, future discoverers, future innovators today within children. All right, so I work uh, also for a school system that focuses uh, on kids that are deaf, blind, and on the spectrum. And for the kids that are deaf, the sign uh, language is a form of steganography that I've discovered. Mm -hmm. They have an ability to understand that they have a superpower. Mm -hmm. When we instill that in children, and they inst we instill that beautiful experience, they go on to be successful. They go on to understand that they started life without a failure, with success. And they may falter, but it's up to us to ensure that they're successful 100 years from now. And although I deal in the digital space of fighting threats and adversaries, and many of us do, it's when we create a world that's better, with more good humans, that we will potentially influence the adversaries to realize and come around and say, maybe, you know what, I'm done with this, we gotta join this side, because there'll be more of us, so this was awesome. And I'll definitely be downstairs, because I wanna figure out how we can help each other. So, yeah. Thank Dig you. It. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's, you know, it, um, 
I, I, I had the words in my head, but I, I just I can't even, because it just it, it rings so true to my heart. When we do presentations, when we do STEM programs, seeing the kids' eyes light up, it's magic to them. Seeing these sparks, seeing these things come up, and then also being able to, to do the same demonstrations that Nikola Tesla was doing, wowing the people of the time, it's such a tool to, to reach out and to try and, you know, it, it gives, silly as it sounds, it gives me hope being here, you know, seeing so many individuals that are just right on the money of just on the same wavelength, you know, of, you know, and just look how many people are here um, and attending, you know, just trying to do the right thing in this crazy world that we're living in where we feel like, you know, it's an uphill battle and it's, everything seems so bleak. Man, there's still, there's, there's definitely hope out there and, Science Center hopes to be a, a beacon of that light for all, all, to betterment of mankind, for betterment of humankind, for betterment of all of us, you know? And so thank you so much for sharing that. That's uh, kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Tesla poked into a lot of different areas, some of which we've caught up with and figured out to some degree, and others we have not as a society. Uh, that's not to say they're nonsense. There's a lot of things that he looked at that have some merit. We just haven't caught up to them yet, as I'm saying. And I was discussing this at the booth with things like, you know, you have lightning, that neutrons, they measure neutrons coming out of them, which means there's nuclear reactors. There's exploding wires, which form a plasma and all kinds of weird mm -hmm. nuclear transmutations occur. But what I wanted to ask you is, are there any, do you know of which professors, universities, researchers, companies, agencies are looking into some of Tesla's more far-fetched and advanced ideas today to see you know, what they can do with them. And who, who are they? Yeah, so a great question, right? Um, first, I think let's break that down in terms of like, who are they? It's we, the people, the people in this room and far beyond, there's many college professors. I wouldn't be able to name them all that continue his legacy and work. Uh, I'll give you a key example that continues to uh, um, kind of energize the community in terms of physics phenomenon in relationship to it, which is the um, uh, Tesla valve invented in the 1930s or so, and had no practical use in society really for the most part. And in short, it's a stop valve with no mechanical moving pieces. Uh, it would go on a couple years ago for China to utilize in a robotic heart transplant. So you have researchers and uh, uh, doctors that came together to uh, print that Tesla valve or create that Tesla valve and put it inside a robotic heart. Uh, you have the utilization of that technology is just, I can't prove a negative, right? There's so much more that we can do, we just don't know. And that's part of what we do is try to inspire under in other individuals and say, hey, this is what's going on, right? What can you do? Because it doesn't have to be just from researchers. It comes from we the people, everyone that's in this room from practical purposes, or whether you it is what the, uh, on September 16th and 17th, we have the world's largest Tesla coil. It's, um, done by Greg Lay, who's a researcher that is um, looking to study the phenomenon that's lightning. And that aspect of it is utilized and studied through the conjunction of a Tesla coil, a very, very large Tesla coil. And we'd love to be in a spot where we recreate one day Nikola Tesla's 187 foot tower and have that coil and continue studying that because no one's done it. So are there people out there? Absolutely. And they're, they're if you stop by our booth, I'll give you a couple more names and people you may be interested to read or look into. Thank you. We'll, we'll grab one more and then uh, I think we'll take the rest of the questions. Please. Right. Hello? All right. I'd like to thank you all for your presentation. But uh, one thing, uh, well, it's my uh, part is, uh, I guess my speech is like two part. First, I just want to uh, say that I appreciate the rounded perspectives that you all give on Tesla. It's very affirming of like, despite like, you know, the flaws and like, uh, you know, the, like, despite, you know, despite our flaws, despite, our, you know, flaws and views that we may have, you know, as long as we have a commitment to bettering the world and as we're willing to, you know, work with and adapt, you know, we can maintain an, a much larger, a larger than life impact that keeps going and keeps inspiring others. But in the spirit of that, from each of you, what would you say is the, I guess, what will be your favorite, uh, compassion, your, your favorite compassionate application of Tesla's works? That's a good one, I like that. 
That's a really broad question, man. Oh, there's like, that is. there's some crazy <laughs> stuff, <laughs> right? Well, choosing we're one, getting kicked off the stage. we're getting can, kicked can off. Can you come downstairs and we'll talk? We'll definitely go Sounds for good. that one. Gnarly question, like though. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thanks guys. for having us. Thank you guys Appreciate so much. It. Hack the planet.